It's a good habit to read food ingredients labels, but it's not enough to know what's in the food. You might think, that seems counterintuitive. What do you mean? Everything that's in the food is listed on the label, right? No, not at all. Have you ever seen a food label that says uh, sprayed with 15 different pesticides? You know what I mean? In addition, let's say you're, you're looking at a loaf of bread. And it's like, oh, whole wheat, got some salt in it, it's got some yeast, you know, other ingredients, high fructose, corn syrup, whatever. And have you ever seen on that list, um, organophosphate, you know, weed killer chemicals, glyphosate, atrazine, 2,4-D. No, it's not on the label, but it's in the food. So how can that be? Well, it turns out that according to current rules under the USDA, EPA, and FDA, that there are all kinds of things that you don't have to list on the label. And of course, food manufacturers don't. So pesticides and herbicides are just one of those things. Heavy metals are another. You don't see heavy metals listed on, on the nutrition facts like contains two parts per million lead. No, it's not listed. No matter how much lead it contains, it's not listed. And there are other things that are created during processing or during cooking, cancer-causing chemicals, for example, such as acrylamides. Acrylamides are produced when you cook or burn carbohydrates. So the outer crusts of every piece of bread, you know, that, that brown part, kind of overly baked part, some people cut it off. Turns out that's actually smart because you're cutting off the cancer-causing acrylamides. <laughs> Seriously. And that's not listed on the label either. You don't see like Wonder Bread now with extra acrylamides. A free extra serving. No, not there. So there are all kinds of things that aren't listed on the labels. And there are also hormone disruptors in the food packaging. So plastics are a great example. Plastics contain endocrine disruptors. They contain endocrine or hormone mimickers, estrogen mimickers that can cause cancer in both men and women. They can give men, believe it or not, breast cancer. Some of these chemicals actually encourage breast growth in men. But it's not like you see a package of Wonder Bread. It's like, I wonder how you got those man boobs from eating estrogen mimickers in, in the food. I'm not trying to pick on Wonder Bread. I don't know if Wonder Bread in particular has higher levels of this than any other bread, just using them as an example, because they do have a funny name. But there's plastic all throughout the food supply. It's in the packaging. And some of the worst things are those packages where you have, oh, microwavable frozen corn or frozen green beans or microwavable popcorn. And the idea is you buy these frozen green beans and you, you stick this plastic bag in the microwave and you just cook it in the bag as the bag is being cooked, creating kind of like a plastic toxic stew. It's like a green bean plasticizer casserole is what you're actually eating. The amount of plastic chemicals that go into your food during microwaving is probably orders of magnitude greater than from any other method. If you just buy frozen vegetables in plastic bags and then take them out of the bag and cook them in a frying pan or something, that's not a problem. I'll buy frozen fruit in plastic bags because that's how it comes usually. And when it's frozen, the plastic chemicals are not leaching into the fruit or into the vegetables or anything like that. It's only when it's, when it's hot, when those molecules are excited by the microwave. All that heat energy drives these plasticizer chemicals like bisphenol A and others into your food. So if you are microwaving your food in plastic, you might as well just stick your head in the microwave and turn that on because it's a form of food suicide, really, to microwave your food in plastic. So don't ever do that. Now let's talk about solutions because one of the things that I've become kind of a food expert on over the years is things that you can take or eat to counteract the toxic effects of the things that are in your food. Now, when it comes to acrylamides, you can just take vitamin C. A lot of the things that are in your food that are toxic to you can be counteracted with vitamin C. And this is also true with, let's say, burned meat products or barbecue. If you're eating barbecue, and I do from time to time as well, I don't know, once a month or something, maybe I'll have barbecue or every couple of months, depending on, I guess, the time of year. I'll have barbecue on July 4th sometimes. 
but I always take vitamin C before and sometimes even after the meal. Vitamin C, it's hard to overdose on it. You almost can't. I mean, some people take 20 grams a day, which is crazy. I've never even taken that much. But you can take a couple of grams before a barbecue meal, and that vitamin C will counteract many, not all, but many of the cancer-causing chemicals in the barbecue, which contains, of course, carcinogens, because when you burn meat fat during the barbecue process, that's what you get. This is also important when you're drinking black tea. So I don't know if you know this, but but black tea, or what's just typically called iced tea, that is the same as green tea, but it's burned and oxidized. So when it's green tea, you have just tea, you know, tea plant leaves that are green, they're still green. They still have antioxidants in them. And when you're drinking green tea, you're taking in these antioxidants that can counteract the oxidants at the cellular level throughout your body. But when you're drinking black tea, that's green tea that's been burned. What is burning? It's a process of oxidation. Burning involves oxygen, oxidizing organic matter. That's what burning is. It's a chemical reaction. Every fire is a chemical reaction of oxidation, rapid oxidation. So black tea is like pre-oxidized tea, which makes it very unhealthy compared to green tea. But guess what? You can take vitamin C and counteract the oxidized black tea. And then black tea has other health benefits, such as black, like, like black coffee does as well. There are other health benefits. So even if you have roasted coffee, yeah, the roasting introduces some carcinogens, but the other nutrients in roasted coffee are actually quite good for you and enhance liver health. And at the same time, they also... You know, they're, they're called bitter molecules, and these bitter molecules are very good at enhancing your health, enhancing your immune system, and they are, they are also antioxidants as well. So there are many, many little factors you need to think about here, but adding vitamin C to almost every meal is a good idea to protect you from that meal. That's why I take vitamin C usually multiple times throughout the day, and since it's water-soluble, vitamin C gets eliminated from your body very quickly. And at the same time, it also gets circulated very quickly because it goes everywhere that water goes in your body. So to summarize everything here, yes, it's good to read ingredients labels, but understand that a lot of the chemicals, even chemicals used in processing, for example, chemical solvents that are used to extract you know, soy protein from soybeans, those chemical solvents are not listed hexane, things like that. They're not listed on the label, even though there might be traces of hexane still in the food. But reading labels is a good idea because it tells you some of what's in the food, but not all of what's in the food. And if you really want to know the truth about what's in your food, you need to have knowledge, which gives you kind of metaphorically x-ray vision. Knowledge about what's in food. Knowledge about pesticides, herbicides, weed killer knowledge about heavy metals, knowledge about acrylamides and hormone disruptors, and knowledge about what you can take or eat that will counteract those things. And that's the knowledge that I've been teaching for 15 plus years. That's what I teach at naturalnews.com. People who read naturalnews.com, they become experts in food. Actually, they, they become experts in lots of things, experts in preparedness and survival and also experts in detecting the fake news of the mainstream media, you know, things like that. They have like propaganda detectors that are very strong because they, they now see the truth about what's, you know, all the lies from the media. But they also become experts in food, nutrition, disease prevention. They become experts in health. And they use this information to save their own lives. So just by reading naturalnews.com every day, seriously, if you just go through the headlines every day, we post every morning and every evening. The morning post is around 11 a.m. Central. The evening post is around 11 p.m. Central. So twice a day, every 12 hours, we post another set of stories. And every day, you're going to see stories there that talk about natural substances, fruits and vegetables and phytochemicals, that's plant-based nutrients, and the positive effects they have on your health and how how you can prevent heart disease and prevent cancer and prevent diabetes, prevent Alzheimer's, how you can enhance kidney health, enhance liver health, enhance digestion. We have articles about 
gut flora and your microbiome, as it's called. We have articles about protecting your brain and all of your neurology from the toxic effects of chemicals that target nerve cells throughout your body. We have all that and much more. Occasional stories on, you know, technology, culture from time to time, lots of things. So read naturalnews.com every day. You will be incredibly well-informed. You will have quite literally more knowledge about nutrition than most doctors. And that's not an exaggeration. Doctors are not experts in nutrition. They're experts in pharmacology. I mean, doctors have a role in society. I'm not trying to say that they're worthless. They're not. You want good doctors when you have a, a critical injury and you're in an emergency room you know, scenario. You want good surgeons and good ER doctors. And some doctors are good at diagnosing conditions and helping patients in other ways. I'm not saying that, that, that they're all bad. But doctors don't know nutrition because they're not taught nutrition. They're not taught foods. You can learn that at naturalnews.com. And support us, by the way, at our online store, healthrangerstore.com. That's where we offer hundreds of laboratory-tested, validated, clean foods, superfoods, nutritional supplements, and clean living products for your home, such as body soap for the shower, a laundry detergent, uh, automatic dishwasher detergent. All of these without toxic synthetic chemicals, no artificial fragrances in any of our products, no GMOs in our products. So check it out at healthrangerstore.com. My name is Mike Adams. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching CounterThink. I want to remind you that my work is supported by the Health Ranger Store. Healthrangerstore.com, we are the only online retailer of foods, superfoods, and nutritional supplements that now conducts glyphosate testing in an ISO accredited laboratory that we own, that I run. We test our products for glyphosate and certify them to be glyphosate tested. You can see the icons on our website. If you want clean food, check out healthrangerstore.com. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.